Good afternoon. My name is Jean-François Bledeau, or JF, whatever works best for you. I'll be the presenter for the Using Jasmine to Test and Deploy and Debug Angular application. Uh, a couple of quick things before we get started with the seminar. Well, first of all, welcome to the seminar. Thank you very much for joining us. So what I'd like to do with you guys for the next hour or so is demonstrate how one might go about unit tests, an Angular application. I'm going to build a bit of a small prototypical Angular application over here, go through, um, or create at least one or two components, services, test those, and I also like to demonstrate how to use things like Spy, how to use uh, mockups or stubs, how to use code coverage in Angular. But uh, to start with, let's begin with the very foundation. I'm going to switch over to the demo. So if you'll permit me, I'll turn off the uh, camera for now, just so that it doesn't interfere with the demo, doesn't use up too much bandwidth. And uh, let's create a new Angular project. Uh, I'm going to bring up over here WebStorm. I'm going to use WebStorm for that demo. If uh, you preferred, I could have used Visual Studio Code. I mean, I could have used Notepad for all intent and purposes. And I'm just going to create a little project, an Angular CLI project. Let's call it HR. Create. That's just going to take a moment or two. Um, now, I will assume that most of you over here have had some experience with Angular. If you're a bit new to Angular, that's okay. Um, and if you have any questions as we carry along, as always, please don't be shy. Um, the project is being created right now. I've got my, uh, my source, my app component, my module over here, the foundation. So I really want to start this from the ground up to show you how I'm not using any magic. I'm not using any uh, special plugins or anything like this. I want to keep it as vanilla as possible. It's now in the installing NPM package, but we can start looking at the code. Uh, nevertheless, over here. Now, for those of you who have developed Angular application, I'm sure you've noticed that every time you create a component, every time you create a service, you create a pipe, you create a directive, it doesn't matter what you create in Angular, there's always this spec file that accompanies it. And there's one over here for my app component, which I'm not going to worry about too, too much for now. Uh, but there's this spec file with those described it's and whatever and we are going to talk about those as we carry along the jasmine side of my application there go. the application has just been successfully created now as the name implies i'm going to create some kind of human resource application uh, and for that one i'm going to need a service so i'll go ahead and generate that service immediately so i'll use my angular command over here uh, generate service and let's generate a service called employee. So this will manage my employees. Give it a moment or two. And there you go. The service has been created. And with that service, if I may go back over here, there you go. With that service, again, a spec file was created. Now, before I look at the spec file, what I'll do is I'll implement a, um, a, a simple, I'll provide a simple implementation for that service over here. Here it is. So to make it kind of sort of prototypical, what I'll do over here is I'll, um, is I'll create a, um, a service that would use HTTP to fetch a list of clients. So I'll uh, inject over here the HTTP client. And I'll provide two accessor over here. I'll provide one to give me a list of all the employees. So this will just return, say, HTTP get. Uh, whoops. This HTTP get. And I'll say, give me a array of employees. And this will return a subscribable. Now, employees does not exist. So I'll create that class right now. I'll put it in my source folder. Let's create a new TypeScript file. And I'll make my employee very simple. Uh, 
in the constructor. I'll just take four fields for that one. First name. Last name. And a uh, to do and a salary. So this is going to be more or less one of my models over here. No big ooh la la. I'm assuming that we're comfortable with what I'm presenting. Now I'll go ahead and import the employee over here, and that should be good. Uh, oh yes, and I need to specify a path, and I'll say go ahead and fetch. Uh, say the fictional path slash employees. I'm gonna provide a second method over here. Let's say by ID, so give me an employee by ID. Here I'll specify the employee ID as a number. And what I'll do over here is I'll do a return this.http.get employee. And here I'll specify the URL employee slash and then the ID I was given. Uh, and let me switch to presentation mode. So the code is boom, nice and big for us. Boom, there we go. So here's my simple implementation of my employee service. It uses the HTTP client to get employee. Now I don't have that service running on my server, all right? So this is not going to return anything, quite the opposite. It is going to give me a couple of errors. I am going to start the application right now, and then we'll talk about testing that application. So I'll run it right now, boom, starting my ng serve. While this is running, we are here to talk about testing. So uh, when it comes to testing that application, there's a couple of things that I'll need to do to make it work correctly. Um, first of all, again, I don't have a backing service for that one. So my, uh, my employee service over here will fail. It will not uh, return anything. It's going to give me a 404. There's nothing at this URL just waiting for it to complete. Uh, so what I'm going to do over here is uh, let me, yeah, let me nevertheless start creating the UI for that application. I'm going to actually let generate a component and Angular generate component. Let's call it employee list. All right, and what I'll do is I'll go to my template for my app component. Yeah, man, there we go. I'll wipe out that big, massive template that was created for us, and I'll just put in a title. Uh, let's call it HR system. And in here, I'll import my employee app, employee list component which right now does nothing. I may take a look at that with you. Uh, let's crack open a browser window. Just looking for my browser. Where did you go? There we are. Bring that over here. Local holes 4200. And there we go. So HR system employee list works. Good, it works, but I wanna break it. <laughs> I wanna get into uh, testing my application. Uh, so let's implement part of the employee uh app component spec over uh here our app component let's begin with this one over here i'll get rid of the title i'll provide a constructor and i'll get the constructor to inject the employee component for me so uh let's make that private Actually, let's make it public so it's like available to the view service there we are so that's going to be my constructor for now the next thing that i would do over here is i would start implementing the uh, template for the employee list component template and in here what i might do is i might do a table uh and inside that table create a row over here ng for and 
didn't uh, specify. Whoops. Come on. Uh, employees of E, and then create my table rules for that. Uh, unsolved variable employees. Did I put it in the wrong place? Might have. Yes, I did. That constructor was meant for this too. And let's make sure the template is happy. There we are. And you're still giving me embedded template. Hmm. I'll ignore that one for now. Um, should be okay. Um, I'm kind of concerned over here. Uh, e of employees. That's like E of employees. There, now it's happy. So I'm not going to finish the template just yet. I will finish it as we carry along. But now this is going to fail. I mean, if I go back to my view, whoop, fail to compile, not exactly what I was uh, uh, going for. Did I not save my work? Uh, where do I have a failure to compile? You can go away. Let's take a look at the uh, two, 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 two. Where's the run? Let E of employees list component. What are you? No, I'm going to ignore that one for now. Um, one way or another, it is not going to work because I don't have um, my backend employee. And we are here to talk about testing, so let's jump into unit testing itself. Everything that you create in Angular, if you use the standard Angular command, always comes with a spec file. Why is it called a spec file? I mean, that's obviously what we're going to use for our unit testing over here, but it's called a spec. Um, if we can take a step back and take a look at the idea behind unit testing, an idea that was first proposed, I shouldn't say first proposed, but it was certainly popularized by Ken Beck in his book, uh, um, uh, Test Driven Development by Example. Excellent book, by the way. I still have it on my shelf over here right beside me. Uh, this is the book that popularized the idea of unit testing, that made unit testing par for the course. One of the characteristics about a good unit test, a well-written unit test, is that it should serve two purposes. The first purpose, the obvious purpose, obviously, is that it should test the application. When we run that test, it should tell us yay or nay. Yes, it seems to work correctly or nay. There's a problem with it. The second thing about a test, a well-written test, and we'll see a couple of examples, uh, a well-written test should describe how the code is meant to be used. So it serves as a form of specification describing how the code is meant to be used. And so uh, that's the reason why in Angular and uh, many other um, organization and uh, framework will use the term spec for their file names over here. So let's take a look at what a spec looks like in Angular. Actually, that's not even Angular over here. Yes, there's some Angular code in here, but this is really Jasmine we're looking at. Jasmine is a unit testing framework written in JavaScript that uh, Angular uses to perform its unit testing, just like Angular uses RxJS to deal with asynchronous streams of events, streams of data. Angular does not reinvent the wheel, it uses Jasmine. A Jasmine set of unit tests is composed of a one or more described. So here's what I like to describe, the specification I like to describe, uh, and in this case, we're just calling it employee list component. The describe takes two parameters. The first one is the employee list component. The second one is a callback, 
big fat callback. That's a whole callback over here. Uh, a callback that takes no parameter uh, and will be invoked for the unit test. Inside that callback, it's a function, so you can declare your variables if you wanted to. But the heart of it will be in this if. You can have as many if as you want. It should create. What does that mean? Well, this is one of my unit tests. It should create an instance of that component. And in, uh, you'll notice over here in the it, uh, similar to the describe, we have text describing what the uh, what it is we're going to uh, we're going to test over here, the specification we like to describe and another callback so lambda without any parameter expect the component the component which has been created up above i'll show it to you in action in a moment to be true t so not null not uh, false not undefined so we expect it to be an object in other words so a unit test a specification in angular will have one or more described, typically one per file, a statement describing what you're describing over here, and the callback. Inside the callback, we have one or more it, which do the actual test. Inside those tests, and I'll demonstrate some of that, we use the expect over here. Here's a value, and here's what we expect the value to be, truthy, false, true, not null, whatever the case might be. We'll see some examples of those as we carry along. You will notice that we are using two other functions, the same function twice, before each. Those before each, as the name implies, means that we are going to run those functions, those callbacks. You'll notice that this is a callback. It's an asynchronous callback. Those callbacks will be called before we run every one of those tests. Now, right now, in my case, there's only one. Uh, there's only one it over here, down below. Uh, but before every one of the it, I would add every one of my tests, both of those would run. There's actually four flavor of those functions. There's a before all, so I run it uh, uh, for once before we run any of the tests, before each, run this before every test. There's an after each, which you can use to clean up your test. So after you run any test, uh, any of the its, go ahead and do a cleanup, whatever you might need to do. And there's also an after all. After all the tests that have run, after all the its, do a cleanup that would apply to all of my tests. Now, before we start creating tests, let's run our unit tests. All right, let's see if it passes or fail, whatever the case might be. To do that, I'll use my Angular test command over here. I could also use npn run test, uh, whatever you want. You can embed that into your ID. So let me run Angular test over here. Give it a second or two. First time I run it, so it's going to have to compile my application. Again, shouldn't take terribly long. We're almost there. Boom. A browser window came up. So here's the browser window. It's controlled by automated tests. There it is. So it is running the test incomplete, no specs found. Well, I beg to defer over here. Uh, is it uh, still complaining about? Oh, there you go. Compilation error. Now, this was not actually intended, but it's not bad. Uh, that's probably the combination error, the compilation error that I was having earlier. It's actually in one of my spec file. All right. So if uh, the spec file fails to compile, well, we're not going to run our test. That's source app app component spec.ts property title does not exist, which makes sense. I deleted it. If I may go to my app component, there's nothing in it. There was a title. I might still be able to undo it. There we go. There was a title, but I deleted it. Boom. There we go. Here was the title. I'm going to leave it deleted. Uh, and instead, I'll go to the test. Here's the test that fails. In here, uh, two, 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 there we go. Expect app title to equal HR. And if I can dissect that test a little bit, 
here's a good test. It should have a title HR, all right? Uh, and for that, it's creating the component, app component. We'll talk about this test, but it create component in more detail. Fixture component instance. So give me the component itself in the test and then expect app title to equal HR. Well, I remove that attribute, I remove that property from my app components. Obviously the test is going to fail. So what I'll do for now is uh, just for now, I'll comment it out. I could delete it altogether, save, and uh, let's see if now it compiles happily. There's another error over here. Employee should be created, failed, Employee list uh, to do to do should render title field. That looks like an old error. Uh, there you go. Now my tests are running, but I'm getting errors. All right, uh, I've got four unit tests that ran. I can see the first one over here passed. The next three failed. Now the order in which the test will run will all be uh, always be randomized. You can see over here that. Uh, Karma, the test runner, is saying randomize with seed 60,135. That's a random number that was selected. That seed is, or that random number is used to choose to determine the order in which the test would run. So right now I can see uh, the first test over here. I can point to it. App component should, cr uh, should create the app. That one works. The next one over here, app component should render the title. That one failed, but that's the one I'm pretty sure I removed. I uh, know, should render the title. Again, this one will fail because what we're trying to do over here is uh, it's looking for the text, HR app is running. HR app is running, but I deleted that text from the template. If I may go back to the component template, all I have is this. So what I'm going to do over here is I'll change the text, the test, to make sure that this heading one over here has the title HR system. So let's make sure that my template executes correctly. So to do that, I'll go back to my test over here. So it should render a title. I'll keep the same title over here. I'm going to create an instance of my app component. So I'll, because I'm doing this in test, I'm not doing this live. I'll create an instance of my app component. Fixture detect change. So I'll allow Angular to go through its change detection process, update everything over here. And finally, um, I'm going to extract the uh, fixture native element as HTML element. So what this is going to give me, it will give me the root element of my template. That's going to be the compiled result over here. And the next thing that I can do over here is I can do a compiled query selector, compiled, which is my native element over here, my, again, my HTML element, the uh, HTML that would be injected in the page. Let's query selector. So I'm going to say look for an H1 over here. Extract the text content for that one. So uh, grab the H1, give me the text content. Whoops. And uh, what I expect it to be is HR system. So I expect that the title over here exists in here. And there's only one. Save. Let's go back to Karma. It's rerunning the test, ah, notice now I'm down to two success or down to two failures. I'm up to two success over here. All right, uh, but I am uh, getting other errors over here. Uh, here's an interesting one, null injector error. It is, it, it's with my employee service over here. Uh, if we take a look at this R3 injector error, I'll make that a little bit bigger for us. Uh, employee service, HTTP client, HTTP client, no provider for the HTTP client. What the heck is it complaining about now? Well, what's happening over here is to instantiate, let's go back to the code, to instantiate my employee service, Angular needs to inject my HTTP client. 
that HTTP client needs to be defined in my module. I mean, if I go back to my, um, or is it, oh, no, it should be in the module itself. Did you not include HTTP client? Well, let me import it over here. That may be why I was getting a uh, compile error earlier, HTTP client module. Right, so I need to include that in my uh, in my import for my module, so the service has access to it. But doing that is not going to solve the error. If I go back to Karma, my test runner, I don't know if it re-ran as of yet, but one way or another, I will be getting the same error. Right, see if I can uh, force it to rerun. There we go, it's rerunning right now. And uh, still getting the same error. Did you actually rerun? Hmm, doesn't look like it. But I'm still getting the same error anyway. I will still get the same error because if you are going to depend on dependency injection, as I'm doing over here with my employee service. I need to indicate in my test over here that the test will also need dependency injection. And for that, what I'll need to do over here is I'll need to go to uh, the before each that was written to uh, for me by Angular. I'm not the one who wrote that, Angular wrote that for me. Uh, so what I'll do over here is I'll go to the testbed configure testing module. And in here, what I'll do is I'll add uh, the import as an array HTTP client module. So because I'm not running it through my module, I'm running it through a unit test. I have to specify to the unit test, make sure to import the HTTP client module. You're going to need that. Let's save the work. Let's go back to Karma over here. It's rerunning my test. Oh, there we go. Now we're up to three successes. There's still one failure. And the failure over here is oh, no provider for HTTP client. Uh, that's in my employee list component. Uh, hmm probably because I have not given it a provider, something I'll come back to as well. Let me add over here a provider, providers. And that's going to be an array of object, provide the HTTP client. the object and that should be good rerun the test still getting one error to to do no provider for http client what am i missing over here got my imports provides http client hmm that is weird. Actually, the provider should not be required. I will talk about providers later on. Um, and it is indeed import. Just want to make sure yeah, it detects it. Not a problem. If it was the wrong name, it would tell me HTTP client module. Just want to make sure it's not because it wasn't safe. New. No. And uh, no provider for HTTP client. Okay, I may revisit that one, see why it's uh, doing that. There might be an error somewhere else in my code, which is not a bad thing. But I'd like to move ahead a little bit at this point. Talk about uh, testing my employee service. I'd like to write a couple of tests for my employee service. The first uh, test I'd like to do, let's actually write our first real unit test. It should retrieve uh, one or more employee. So that's going to be my test over here. It should retrieve one or more employee. 
here's the callback. And in the callback, what I'll do over here is I'll uh, provide an expect over here. So this is on the service itself. Uh, instance of the service will be provided to me in the variable called service. That's an employee service. So let's give that a quick go. I'm going to call service dot list. And what I expect over here is that I'm going to get at least one employee. So let's put this inside an expect, an assertion, if you want, expect service dot list. Um, and I'll say dot length to be greater than greater than zero. And, uh, oh, actually there's a problem over here. I wanna call list, but list does not return an array. It returns an observable. Okay, not a problem. So what I'll do over here is I'll just change that. I'll put that in a Lambda. So service.list dot subscribe. We've all done that in Angular, I'm sure. Here, that's gonna give me my employees. And let's put that in here instead. Now I am introducing a couple of problems, which you'll see very soon. Employees.line. So there you go. Here's going to be my uh, unit test for um, for the employee list. It should retrieve one or more employees. So the length, the number of employees should be not zero. Let's go back over here and, whoops, I'm getting a strange new dot over here. It's not green, it's kind of uh, orange over here. Uh, what is it complaining about over here? Well, expected undefined to be truth. Actually, that's not the error that we're looking for, but uh, what the heck does that weird dot represent? Notice it for the test that I wrote. It may be a little bit small on your screen, but it does read employee service should retrieve one or more employee. Uh, actually, I should have said employees. So it is for that test. But why did I get a orange dot? Well, what's happening over here is that from the perspective of Jasmine, no assertion were actually done. It's as if I had never called the expect over here. Well, I do call it, I do call it subscribe. Oh, but wait, I am getting an error, am I not? That path that we have within, whoops, not employee, but that we have within the employee service over here doesn't exist. So this is going to fail. And because I'm running this in testing, what I'd like to do over here is I'd like to run it in, uh, I'd like to provide an alternative representation of my employee service, a mock-up if you'd like. So let me provide an alternative representation, an alternative version of that class. Let's create a new TypeScript file. Let's call it employee service stuff. All right, call it whatever you want. It's not important. What's important over here is that I have an employee service stub. I'm going to export employee service, export class, employee service stub. Notice I don't have any special inheritance, uh, uh, special decorator over here. I'm just uh, calling it employee service stub. Let me provide the list function over here. So the list function, uh, and what I'll do over here is I'll return a observable. So I'll use the of over here. And actually, let me create a list of employees right over here. Create a new employee. So let's say it's going to be employee ID one, given the name Charles. Babbage, and let's give him a salary of 65,000. Copy that a couple of times. That's going to be employee two, three. Make that Ada Lovelace. How about 70,000? And we'll make that Grace Hopper. And let's make her 75,000. 
And uh, oh, did I make the salary string? I meant to make it a double or a number. Boom, we're good. All right, so let's import up. So now I'm using a little bit of RxJS because I want to simulate that this would come from a uh, service, that this would come from an HTTP request. I need to return an observable. That observable over here um, will be a copy of my array. So oops. I use the splat operator to copy this dot employees, copy of my array. Uh, and to make it behave like an observable, I'll even add a delay pipe delay, let's say half a second over here. Let's import that. Boom, there we go. So this will return an array of employees and uh, simulate a HTTP request. Um, simulate, well, not necessarily simulate the request itself, but uh, uh, run it through RxJS, run it through an observable and give it a half second delay. I don't even have to go with half second. If that's too long, it can make it one millisecond. That would be adequate over here uh, to deal with the idea of latency. But you'll see why I'm introducing that uh, specifically in here. So the next thing I want to do over here is I want to use that class over here in my unit test that I have over here. Right now, my unit test is using the employee service. Let's change that around so that instead of using the employee service, I am going to tell it that um, I'm going to provide. So let's add what's uh, import providers. This is going to provide the uh, employee service. But for this test, I want you to use the class the employee service stuff. So what I'm doing over here is I'm substituting independence injection. I'm substituting one of my class with another. So that's where mockups or stubs comes into play. Uh, so don't actually use the employee service. Use the employee service stub instead. The rest will work the same. Let's go back to uh, Karma over here. Uh, it is running, and uh, there's still that failure, which I'm going to ignore for now. And uh, hmm, employee service should retrieve one or more employees, but uh, kind of weird. I'm getting that, or that uh, yellow dot. That yellow dot, again, means that from the perspective of Jasmine or Karma, the test runner, we haven't actually tested anything. We've never called expect or anything like that. Yet in our code, we do. If I may go back to my uh, test down below, I am calling expect employee length to be greater than zero. But that code Well, it is executed. I'm saying it is never really executed. It is executed, but what happens over here is that Jasmine is running our test synchronously, not asynchronously. Here, because I'm using subscribe, I'm using RxJS, the code will happen asynchronously, the same as if I was using my actual HTTP client in, in um, Angular. So what's happening is that the way Karma works over here is that when it runs a test, as I have over here, it expects, no pun intended, that uh, we're going to execute the method. The method will do all of its assertion and then uh, return normally or maybe through an exception. Uh, it's not important. What's important over here is that uh, we expect that it will, um, it will do its test synchronously. Here, what happens is when we execute our test, the test will call the service variable, call the list method, subscribe, all right, and then return immediately. After it has returned, 
sometimes after it has a return. We don't know exactly when. Uh, a millisecond, uh, so uh, about a millisecond later, then the callback will take place. But what's happening is from the perspective of karma, that test has already executed. Not good. So how do I tell karma this test is asynchronous and you'll need to wait for me to tell you that, hey, we're done with that test. So if you are testing anything in karma, uh, in Angular that is asynchronous, how do we do that? Well, go to your test lambda that we have over here. All right, so there's my callback for the test. Request a parameter over here. We're going to call it done. The name is significant. So done. This is going to give you, you can see that here in um, um, WebStorm, this is going to be an instance of a done function. And the idea now is this does two things. First of all, it tells Angular, it tells Karma, this test will run asynchronously, not synchronously, all right? So when we finish the execution of that test, we're not done the test, wait for me to notify you that the test is indeed done. How do I notify Karma that the test is done? Well, that's where the done parameter comes into play. We use it, it's a function, so we call that function to tell Karma, there we go, we're done the asynchronous test at this point. Let me save my work. Let's go back to the Karma runtime over here. Boom, now I get four green dots. All right, I'll still ignore that last one over here, but now I get four green dots. So this said, now that we've got those four green dots, we're good. Let's move ahead and let's now doo -doo -doo -doo, explore one last thing, two last things actually. I'd like to talk about spies and I'd like to talk about code coverage. So spies, how do we deal with spies? What is a spy in the first place? Well, let me... Um, yeah, let me do the, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a bit of an academic example. I don't wanna to take too much of your time. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to, oh yeah, well, let's do it this way. Let's go back to our, to our employee or app component, actually the uh, employee list that I have over here. Uh, this one will render a list of employee. All right, uh, that employee variable is injected in here. Uh, and actually I noticed really I should call list over here, call list. That may be why I was getting a compile error previously. Uh, where's my browser window? Still getting a failed compile. I may have to restart the, um, the uh, ng-serve. What I'd like to do over here is I'd like to verify that when we serve that list of employee, let me go down to my test over here, app component spec. I wanna make sure that when we uh, serve that list of employee that this method gets called, which is what SPY is all about, is a specific method being called. So it calls, employees dot list here's my callback and what i'll do here is i'll create my fixture actually i'll board the code that we have up above speed things up a little bit boom picture which represents a component that will hold on to my component detect change to allow Angular to go to its change detection cycle, uh, call its event and update the UI, that sort of thing. And uh, finally, uh, actually before I do that, what I'm going to do over here is I'll add a, a bit of a uh, test over here. This is where, again, I'm going to spy on the uh, request. So let me do the following. What I'll do is I'll indicate that I wanna spy on and I'll indicate that I want to spy on the uh, fixture dot uh, to do. 
employees why are you not giving to me actually do i have the component uh... Oops. okay well, let's create an instance actually no it's right there Create component employees. Oh, I made it private. Did I? No, it should be public. I'm thinking of the wrong one. Okay. Apologies. Let's move that to um that would be an employee list spec. I guess I don't have it open. Employee list spec. There we go. So spy on list. And uh, just wondering why it's not recognizing employees. Not. I'll. Do, 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 do. This should return a app component. Yes, employees. Let's make sure it is. Oh, I see I've got an app component, copy and paste failure. Uh, so this should be my employee list component. And now do I have my employees? And I never, no, there it is. Public employee, employee service. I did call it employees, yeah. Okay, let me move ahead uh, nevertheless. So what I want to do over here is I want to make sure that the list method is called when we, um, when we render that component. This is where the spy comes into play. Kind of concerned that it's not recognizing employees. This should return a... Come on. Yeah, employee list component. Okay, so um, let's do the detect change. And finally, let's make sure that fixture dot employees. Actually, it should be an expex. To have been called. So here's my example of working with a spy. So there's two steps to spying on something. And again, the goal of spy is to find out if a specific method has been called. So you uh, use the spy on function over here. Spy on, here's my object. Here's the name of the method. I'd like to make sure it's called on that object. So you don't pass the method, you pass the name, the method. That's not a typo over here. So I've passed the name of the method over here. Um, then you perform your test, you act on your test over here, and then expect your object, uh, sorry, the object dot uh, function dot list to have been called. Was it called at least once? All right. Actually, there's uh, even to have been called once. Whoops. Once that's available for us. There's also to have been called with, which is kind of cool. It allows you to verify that it was called with the right parameter. Actually, let me show it to you uh, in action. Uh, I'm going to use a different um, different example. I do want to confirm component fixture. It is of the right type. I just says there we go. Component assist. I'm just going to add that to get it to compile correctly. Now, if I go to my Karma, just out of curiosity, oh, I'm getting two errors. Uh, calls employee list. Oh, notice the error. No provider for HTTP client. That's one that we've seen before, and that's an easy fix. What I need to do over here is in my module declaration, indicate that I want to have a import for HTTP client module. Let's run that. 
and uh, cannot defer to to do object of type object. So this is due to my template. See over here is not assignable to type. Oops. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see now why it's failing because list returns an observable. So let's make it this way. Uh, let's make that public. There we are. And in my Angular on in it. So let's keep it simple. I'll just say, come on, fingers. And now let's do that. Boom. Let's make it a blank list. There we go. That should be good. And in the template, now I'll just use the list variable. Running our test. There we go. Now my test for the call works to demonstrate that it does call, that, that it does work. I still get my previous error. I can come back to it later on. We're running short on time, so I want to wrap this up. Not too, too late for you guys. Um, now to, to demonstrate that it does work, let me go back to my test uh, over here where I have my spy on. I wanted to make sure that the list method does get called employees.list does get called that test passes if i go back to my angular on in it over here and comment out that line now i no longer uh, call employee list go back over here it is not giving me an error so you save it let's go back to the spec you have been called with O and called period. Anyway, did I not save it? It's employee list blank or commented. Oh, it is there. Guess I fixed the other error by um, unwillingly calls employee list. So expected spy list to have been called. It's not being called. Let's remedy that. I'll go back to my code on comment that line. And uh, cannot read property of undefined reading subscribe. Different errors, not necessarily what I meant to show you over here. Uh, that list. Uh, going to take quick boo over here no oh, that's the wrong one let's go to the stub return yeah it returns the subs the the i put the uh path in the wrong part oh well not a big deal one way or another you can now see that uh it does succeed uh when it comes to the call over uh here all right there is one last thing i'd like to show you actually there's a couple more things i sh should show you but there's only five minutes left so to wrap things up uh what i'd like to do over here is i'd like to show you how to do uh, get a code coverage report the question is how much of my code actually gets touched on 
when I run my unit test. So if I have if statement, while loop, that sort of thing, do I actually enter their body? If I have a switch, do I go through every case in the switch, that sort of thing? So what I'd like to do over here is I'd like to get a report of the branches whoops, that I hit over here. Let's go back to uh, that over here. Uh, what I'd like to do is get a list of all the code that I touch and the code that I miss as well. To do that, let me run, start a new console. Let me run angular test dash dash with coverage. With coverage, what this will do over here is it will, oh, sorry, not with coverage, code coverage. Generate a report for me. I'll give it a moment or two to run. Compiling. And it brought back up uh, Karma to run the test. Should get the same output, boom, same uh, failure. I'm gonna ignore it for now. Uh, but what's important now is a new directory has been created in my project coverage. Inside that directory, I've got an index.html. Let's take a look at this one. I'll open it in my browser. Here is my code coverage. So I can see in terms of my test, I've got my source, I've got my source app. I cover about 88, 89% of my statement, all the branches, whoop, 80% of my functions, I'm missing some function. I go through about 85% of my lines of code over here. In my employee list, same idea, a little bit less in terms of statement, all the branches, I don't really have any, have any if, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and I don't call every function over here. I call about two thirds of the functions in here. So this gives me a sense of how much of my code is actually tested by my unit test. Am I missing any ifs? Am I missing any else if or any else in my switch? Am I missing any cases? What my whip uh, or my um, while loop? Is there a chance that I don't enter a while loop, that a code never gets executed inside my while loop? That's your code coverage in Angular. So this said, now that we've seen the idea of writing unit tests in Angular, writing stubs, writing spies, writing, um, uh, using code coverage, thank you very much for joining.